welcome to the prophetic teaching and healing ministry of Pastor Olufemi Fadi, the senior pastor of Divine Glory Christian Church. We bring you this faith and power-filled, life-transforming word of God. For the scripture says, the entrance of his word gives light and understanding to the simple. Get ready for the miraculous and be blessed. I welcome everybody to service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad to be in the house this morning because I feel this excitement within me. I don't know if somebody is feeling the joy of the spirit on the inside. I pray that this joy will be everlasting in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All through December, ladies and gentlemen, we are enjoying the fullness of the Father's pleasure. And this pleasure comes via joy. Because in his presence, the Bible says there is the fullness of joy. And at his right hand, I have everlasting pleasures. Those pleasures are inaccessible until the door of joy is opened. Am I talking to somebody here? So the joy of the Lord is the access to all that God carries. Oh, come on. I see somebody exciting. I see somebody exercising. I see somebody demonstrating enjoy this time around. Wherever you go out through this week, the joy of the Lord shall be conspicuous in your life. When they see you, they will see joy. <laughs> Come on, tell somebody, I carry joy. <laughs> no sadness in my life. <laughs> I carry the excitement of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. <laughs> Welcome to service. God bless you, very good. In Jesus' name. I brought the word of God unto us today, and by the Spirit of the living God, I will be teaching on from leanness to fatness part number three <laughs> i told you the lord spoke to me that i should uh teach on from leanness to fatness am i right i preached the first part pastor told me took the second part right so today is part three come on tell somebody today is part three uh, and it's very important that we pay attention to all these aspects what i'm teaching today ladies and gentlemen is a general principle that applies to all aspects of life it applies to all aspects of life. It's not only uh, to, to exert, you know, uh, pressure on your migration from leanness to fatness. No. <laughs> it is a, a generally applicable principle of scriptures, which of course you see in the lives of all that had ever walked with God and achieved it in the hand of this almighty. Oh, glory be to God. The Lord said unto me today, <laughs> He said, I call them from weakness unto strength. He said, there are people here changing levels. Amen. You are moving from weakness unto strength this time around. Amen. I see the strength of God showing forth in your life on every side. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell somebody, I migrate <laughs> from weakness unto strength. <laughs> glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. From leanness to fatness, supernatural migration, part number three. Glory be to God. And uh, today, by the grace of God, I will be teaching on what I caption persistence. Persistence. What do I call it? Persistence, persistence, whichever way you call it. It's all a matter of horror English. Amen. Some call it pass, some call it pair. <laughs> We're on the same level. The most important thing is the communication or the understanding. Let me tell somebody I understand what pastor is talking about. <laughs> Whether you call it persistence or you call it persistence. Glory be to God. Uh, it's still the same thing. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Glory be to God. Some call BUS in one way. Some call it in another way. Glory be to God. <laughs> so today by the grace of God, we are on persistence. Persistence, glory be to God. <laughs> Persistence is the staying power. Oh, glory be to God. It's the ability to be consistent. An ability to be insistent in the face of opposition on your opinion, <laughs> uh, on your course of action, without giving in to the circumstantial situations that are surrounding you, mounting pressures for variations or variableness. I might talk to somebody here. Persistence is the ability, <laughs> is the capacity to hold fast or firm, <laughs> to be unchanging in one's disposition or opinion 
or principle or even course of action regardless of mountain pressures regardless of surrounding pressures ability to stay on course regardless of what is coming your way to insist on a course of action to say this is what I want and what I want must come to pass and to stay in there it doesn't matter what is happening I know what I want and I'm going for it everything is discouraging you but you are saying you know what I'm going to stay on these until my change comes. Glory be to God. <laughs> the Bible says, uh, Job said, Henry Debo Shakata, all my appointed days will I wait till my change comes. That is to say, I'm going to stay on these until my change comes. I'm not going to give up. Many people give up too early in life. Many give up too soon. But God is telling somebody here, there is a special ability wrought into your Moses today. And it is called the past system power of God. Am I talking to somebody here? It's an ability to stay on course. It's, it's, it's an ability to insist. It's an ability to be tenacious. It's an ability to say, you know what? I'm not changing my course of action. I am going to stay on this until I get the desired result. Am I talking to somebody here? And I don't know who I'm speaking to you. You've been staying on it. Your desired result is coming through now. <laughs> oh, many have given up on it. I say, I'm telling you right now, you are getting instead of back into that position of insistence. Uh, you are standing and all heavens are respecting your stand. Uh, oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? If you are the one receiving what I'm talking about, I think the amen should be the loudest in the house. Uh, our God has given, unto, has given unto us a word. The Bible said he sent a word unto Jacob and he has lit upon rot Israel. When God gives us a word, he told us from leanness to fatness is the word I'm giving you. And when he gave us this word, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stay on it and tell the devil, you know what? I'm not where I used to be. I'm moving forward. There is a migration in my life. Though the sack letter is coming, it doesn't matter. Though the children are sent out of school, it doesn't matter. Though there is no food in the pantry, it doesn't matter. Though the alert is coming from the bank and everything is showing red, it doesn't matter. I know who I believe and I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Uh, that in the name of Jesus, it will be unto me as has been spoken by the Lord. Uh, circumstances will not dictate my destiny. The word of God will dictate the realities of my life. Uh, am I talking to somebody here? I don't know whether you have given up on time past. Uh, I said the one who changes situation moving in your life right now. I said the one who changes circumstances coming through for you right now. Am I talking to somebody here? I bind a spirit of lukewarmness in the house. That in the name of Jesus, your blessings are coming through now. Your staying power will never be shaken by the devil. Come on, tell somebody, I'm staying through and I'm standing strong. Am I talking to somebody here? Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the devil wants to discourage people out of staying true and standing strong. The, 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 the central ministry of the devil is to discourage and discredit God's word. In fact, the Greek name of the devil is Diabolos, which simply means something that introduced doubt. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That was the same way, I mean, God hit him. He said, oh, are you sure that um, God said you should not hit her? Ah, God knows that the day you hit of it, you will be as God. You will be as God. When God said, let us make man our own image and our likeness. You will be, the word has means like. You will be like God. Are you catching what I'm talking about? When God has already made you like him. So he only confused him on his personality. I don't know who I'm talking to here. And the devil took it. So he discredited God's word in their face. Oh, they said, oh, so there is something this God is hiding from me. I don't know whether somebody here is also thinking now too that God is hiding something from you. That is not hiding anything from you. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. So man went after it and then they found the destruction. But thanks be unto God because we've come to the place of knowledge. We've come to the place of revelation. We've come to the place where we know God afresh and we know him from a new perspective. And the devil cannot introduce doubt in our heart. Are you sure these things they are saying are true? Are you sure this? Are you sure? Ladies and gentlemen, those things are true. I say those things are what? They are true. That is the truth. The best thing, ladies and gentlemen, is for somebody to believe. The man of God that came here the day the word was, was released. Uh, Pastor, they told me, well, you know him, right? This man of God, the moment I gave the word, the man said, I believe. He said, I will come back with my testimony. Can you remember when he was talking about it? He said, I received the word. After the service, the man came to my office there. 
I mean, after he went to heat and all that and everybody went. So he came to my office and said, Daddy, you got to pray for me. So I knelt down, he laid hands on me and prayed for me. I stood up, the man also knelt down. He said, lay hands on me and pray for me. Ah, I said, me pray for you. He said, pray for me. So anyway, I laid hands on him and we began to pray. I knew he had a bill to pay. <laughs> the, maybe probably the biggest bill, you know, in his family uh, at this particular time. And this bill has been tearing them somehow. I, I'm, to, I'm not talking about, it, I mean, I'm talking about several millions of naira. Several millions of naira. And the worst of it, the wife told me, said, they don't even know where a cobble, I asked them. He said, we don't know where a cobble is going to come from. He said, we don't know any. I, I looked at it, and then you are believing God for this? They said, if it is God, God will provide. If it is not God, then let the thing be dropped. They don't know where, it, they don't have any investment that can foot one million out of it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I, so as I was praying with them, God told me, said, tell him I've, I've taken over the bill and I've paid it. The word that came today is for him. Ah, I, I looked at him and said, sir, the Lord said I should tell you that he has taken over the bill and he has paid it, sir. He said, and as you are going, this will begin to happen. Now, please understand, only God can speak in that capacity and bring it over. The man stood up, he looked at me, he said, I will call back and tell you what the Lord has done. He said, I've received my word. <laughs> he stood up. Straight, he went to the airport and flew. God to Abuja told his wife. They started celebrating the world. I mean, you needed to understand somebody who believed the world. The Lord went and hit somebody in America and told the person. Now, I mean, when they were telling me the testimony this last week, I could not believe my ears. He hit somebody in America and the person called and said, The Lord called, the Lord told me now that I should give you ten thousand dollars. <laughs> came, gave the ten thousand dollars. The first and first he gave five thousand dollars. He didn't tell them ten thousand dollars. He said, The Lord said I should give you. Give them 5,000. They thought that was all. No, the Lord said, I told you to give 10,000, not five. So the person went and go back and said, please come and collect another 5,000 to balance it. And then another man called again. I mean, and then the man said, please, a money came in from my company into my account. Now, please understand, these were people in different areas. These people were not telling, please, we have need, please help us. No. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? People in different areas. Another man said, please, sir. I just woke up this morning. A money came in for me yesterday into my account from my company. And the Lord said, I should give the money to you. Ah! The two of them looked at each other like this. And lo and behold, how much was the money? The man said, please, can you send me your account? By the time the man wired the money to them, 20,000 US dollars. Another person said, please, sir, um, this, I have this 7 million for you. Ah, like that, like that. The pastor said, pastor, only all the money is complete. And you know one thing, all these people are located in different places and God spoke to them. And one thing that characterized everything was that they were saying, God told me, God told me, God told me. <laughs> there is somebody here, I see God speaking to your helpers. The first thing that pastor told me, the pastor was quoting all the words. The word I gave in 2014, January, the man was quoting. He, was, he said, you told me, you told And it was every word he quoted, he shared with me how everything came to pass one by one. He said, that day when you lay hands on me in your office, and you told me this, he says, I stood up, all heavens were opened. Now, please understand, when the same word is coming to you now, that's the reason why persistence is coming. Somebody's insisting on what God is saying. I said somebody's insisting on his right right now. That this time around you are moving into supernatural fatness. Yeah. You believe what the prophet is saying. I think let your human be the loudest in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? The Bible says, Bless is she that believes. Let me tell somebody, Bless is she that believes. Uh, for there shall be a performance of those things uh, which were told out from the Lord. They were struggling with it for so long until a word came from heaven. Ah, somebody's word has come. <laughs> and I'm telling somebody here, this word will not drop even on the floor until God has performed all his intentions in your life. Persistence, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, is the power, the ability to stay on course regardless of what the devil is bringing to discourage you. Regardless of the circumstances around you, you say, you know what? My opinion is not changed. I'm moving into migration. 
I mean, I'm moving into fatness. In fact, I am already in fatness. And the realm of the spirit and fat is just that the physical is taking some little time before they can respond to my spiritual realities. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? And as you are taking your steps day by day, you are assuring yourself, you know what? Things are changing in my life. I said, my life is moving forward. Am I telling somebody here? Is your season to prosper? Is your season for elevation? Is your season for testimonies. You believe what I'm talking about? Come on, shout hallelujah. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Oh my goodness, I got some awesome testimony even from this church this last week. <laughs> and I'm telling somebody here in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you are the next online to share your testimony. In this season of fatness, you will never be left behind. I see robust blessings coming your way. I see your transactions coming through. Lift up your two and say, I connect in the name of Jesus. Insistence is a nature we find with God. And tenacity is a cardinal character of the Almighty. The ability to stay on course and not change your mind on things. Oh yeah, we see it with God. Nothing discourages God out of what he has said. No, 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 no. Nothing discourages him. In fact, there's something we know about this God in Malachi chapter number 3 and verse number 6. The Bible says, I'm the Lord, I change it not. I am the Lord, I do what? I change it not. In Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse number 8, Jesus Christ speaking, <laughs> but Paul speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. As Jesus not said that you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If there is consistency with the Father, there is consistency with me. Glory be to God. Am I talking to somebody here? He's a power in himself. Come on, tell somebody, consistency is a power. <laughs> He's a power in himself. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? <laughs> Ah, Lengre Dibo Zunamante Heblo Hagdazia. In James chapter number one and verse number 17, the scripture reiterates the same thing about this nature that we find in God. In James 1 17, the scripture says, Every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. This God is consistent, there is no variableness with Him. Hit Him today, what you will find in Him you is the same that you will find in Him tomorrow. He's, he's, he's constant, and that is what gives us a consolation because He's not changed His mind, He has not repented on his opinion concerning our lives. That's the reason why we are still rested and we can rely on his word. Why is it that what he said some 4,000 years ago, somebody is relying on it. Abrahamic blessings that he said 4,000 years ago, somebody or even more, you are relying on it and you are claiming it and God is still confirming it. Why? It's because God does not change on his words. As he said it, he will bring it to pass. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. The Bible says God is not a man that should lie. Now is he a son of man. Oh my goodness, let me hit somebody high five. And tell the person, my God is not a man. <laughs> that should lie. Now is he a son of man. That should repent of his words. As he said it, will he not do it? As he spoken it, will he not bring it to pass? You see, we need to get this level of restedness in God. There's a level of confidence this thing will provoke on our inner man. That there is a consistency with this God. He doesn't just change his opinion. Do you understand what I'm talking about? What he said yesterday is still what he's saying today. That is something about my God. He is consistent. Let me tell somebody, he's consistent. In his will and in his counsel. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? That is what we call the immutability of his counsel. He's consistent about it. And it gives us a lot of confidence and a lot of re <laughs> rest in our, in, our, in, our, in our Christian work. It strengthens us from our inner man to be able to trust this God. And to be able to walk with him very reliably. Am I talking to somebody here? Uh, it's a nature that is wonderful that we find in God. Every believer, naturally speaking, should be able to look at this nature and love it and embrace it because God is ever consistent. In the book of Jonah, the Bible made us to understand something. That in Jonah chapter number one, the word of the Lord came unto Jonah and said unto him, verse number two, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. For because, I mean, for his sins are great and all of that. And the Bible said, verse number three, Jonah got up and fled to Tashi straight. <laughs> is somebody here when I'm talking about he paid his fare? 
<laughs> oh yeah, it, it was his will, so he had to pay it. Your will is your own bill. <laughs> the Bible says he paid this fare. He went to Joppa, looking for a ship, slave going to Tashish. You understand what I'm talking about? And he paid this fare. But you see, from the point he repented to where he was going, how much did he pay? If it is God, it's God's will. <laughs> if it is God's will, then it's God's bill. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? Now hear this, he paid this fare, and then we all knew the story how the storm came on the, on the ship and all of that, and they woke him up, and the mariners consulted their God. Some people at times, they could be a little bit stupid. Things are so bad in their lives, they don't even know that it is time to consult with divinity some people they are facing the worst of events out there ladies and gentlemen and they don't know it is time to go back to the ultimate answer whose name is Jesus uh, am I talking to somebody here but we are seated under his feet today I see answers in your hands I see answers in your lives the Bible says the mariners brought out their gods and at the end of the day when they cast law the laws fell on, 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 on uh, Jonah and they brought him out Jonah yeah what do we do Jonah told them everything that happened that Oh, he was fleeing from the presence of God. Where do you want to flee to that his presence is not? Psalm 139 and verse number 7, the Bible says, Where do I go that I do not find your spirit? He said, I go to the bottom of the sea, I find you there. <laughs> I enter the submarine like Jonah, I find you in the belly of the fish. <laughs> I go to the topmost top of the mountains. <laughs> you are dear Jehovah, you are everywhere. <laughs> I might talk to somebody here. So the Bible made us to understand that, that uh, Jonah told them, and they threw Jonah into the sea because the storm was bad. The Bible said they rolled very hard to bring the ship to a harbor, but they couldn't. <laughs> so they had to throw him to the, to the sea. And immediately, instantly, the storm ceased. The Bible says they were afraid. There are some wrong people. You need to throw them out to have peace. And you know one thing? Jonah doesn't want to go until you throw him out. <laughs> you know what I'm he won't go of his own opinion. I see bad friends thrown out of your lives. I see negative companies broken in your lives. I see wrong companions right now taken out of your lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible made us to understand that Jonah chapter 2 began to pray and speak unto God. And as he was praying in the belly of the fish from verse 1, he prayed and prayed and prayed and verse 10. The Bible said, and the Lord spoke, Jonah 2.10, to the fish to vomit him. So the fish vomited him. And that was the end of the chapter. Chapter 3 started. The word of the Lord came back unto Jonah saying, go to Nineveh and preach the preaching which I preach you. The same instruction again, ever consistent. It doesn't matter what you go through. He will still go back to the same thing he said. He will still go back to the same thing he said. Let me tell somebody, my God is consistent. He's very consistent. Is somebody here anyone I'm talking about? I think somebody needs to work on his personality, ladies and gentlemen. If you are here or there, and I'm speaking prophetically because I'm feeling this about somebody here. I see in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that inconsistency taken out of your character. From today, you have stability in your character. Is somebody here anyone I'm talking about? The Bible said the Lord spoke and he said the same thing back unto him. The same thing, have a consistent God. Uh, this is the nature that we find in God. And God is saying, my children, this is the same I want to see in you. Uh, it's the same that you should follow. In Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 1, the scripture is saying, the scripture says, <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 1, he said, be ye therefore imitators of God as dearly beloved children. That is to say, this is the kind of thing I wanted to imitate. Uh, I want you to be insistent and to be persistent. I want you to insist on a course of action. To insist on your opinion or insist on something that you know that you know is right. And as you stay there, you begin to see my glory. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, it seems in this Christian work, if people don't take up this kind of nature, they don't see the best of God. Many of you in time past, you've tried doing some certain things. And for some reasons, you couldn't just see some certain dimensions of breakthrough. Because you gave up so soon. You gave up quite early. Some people at the time when they were to enter into the new phase of their life like this. Just stepping into the threshold, they returned. They gave up. And God is saying, if you had just persisted some little more, you could have seen my glory. And I don't know who is here today that have returned, I mean, from the course of action that is to promote your life. I see Jesus right now retracing back your steps and setting your feet on the right course of life in the mighty name of Jesus. 
by the power of Lambro Disto Zigata. The Lord said, There's someone here, Lengeredokto Zufredia. He said, Mark my words this December. He said, Before that disaster happens, you will walk out of the place. Yeah. I remember a governor in this country that I was talking to. I said, I see that they're going to send our assassins to kill you. But the Lord said, You're going to escape it. And I lay hands and I prayed. And 10 minutes before the assassins came in, the man felt like going out of his house and he walked out. They came into his house looking for him to kill him. They ransacked everywhere with all their machines and all their guns and everything. Ladies and gentlemen, they could not find the man. So the man escaped out of the country straight. <laughs> I don't know who I'm speaking to you. Even if it remains one second, angels will move for you. Yeah. If you believe what I'm talking about, let the human be the loudest in the house. Yeah. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? So please understand, ladies and gentlemen, that in Christianity, this is a nature to imbibe. It's a nature to what? To imbibe. Persistence. <laughs> Persistence. Ladies and gentlemen, persistence. It seems people don't get through with God, receiving things until they take up this kind of nature. It doesn't matter even if God has spoken unto you, it is one force that brings his word to pass. In 1 Kings chapter number 18, we saw a situation here. From verse number 1, God began to speak to Elijah. I mean, sorry, Elijah. After Israel has been converted to Somalia for three and a half years, Elijah had inflicted serious famine on the land. The Bible said, the Lord spoke unto him, verse 1, 1 Kings 18. Elijah, the time has come for me now to show up. I'm about to send rain to the ground. He said, go and show yourself unto Ahab, for I will send rain now. And Elijah, hearing that directly from God, not through another prophet, but from heaven direct, he stood up. With my goodness, he found Obadiah. I said, Go and tell him I'm here. At the end of the day, of course, we had the whole experience on Moncava where he called down fire and all of that. He slaughtered all the false prophets and everything happened. And Elijah got to the mountaintop. The Bible says, verse 42, Ahab went to eat and to drink. Elijah went to the mountaintop. After you have given the word of prophecy, Elijah told Ahab, It will soon rain now. So go and eat and drink and be fine. The man went to eat and drink. <laughs> Thinking, yeah, everything is now fine. At least family is over. But Elijah, knowing how to make things happen, whether you are here, you are a minister, you give people a word and then you go to rest, expecting the word to come to pass by itself. At times you may be wrong. <laughs> I say at times you may be what? You may be wrong. The Bible said, God told him. The man has released the word. He still went to the mountain to pray that the word may come to pass. Verse 42, the Bible said, Elijah climbed onto Mount Kama. <laughs> 43, he put his face in between his knees and began to pray. Jambro, Hegebo, Bagsi. After a while, he told the servant, go check if you can see the, the signs of, of rain, the cloud coming up. The man went. He says, no, sir, I couldn't see anything. <laughs> he said, go seven times. Now, go seven times. You know, you know what it means to, to go to climb down a mountain and go and check this direction or that direction to see if, if, if you can see anything. I mean, he's not telling him to just you know, catch a glimpse and come back. No, make observations. Every time he went, he made, so it's to say that the man persisted in prayers. Only God knows how many minutes, only God knows how many hours. Ya bro, ekipo, ba bro. Do you what I'm talking about? Ah, seven times simply means I'm not going to give up until I get the right answer. Do you know what I'm talking about? He insisted and persisted. And as he stayed there, oh man, lambro nigedos to here. The seventh time the man said, I, sir, I saw Something like the size of a fish. Elijah said, you got it right. Go tell Ahab. It's going to rain right now. He stopped praying by himself too. The man said, the Bible said, he gathered himself and the hand of God was upon him. He had got on his four chariots. I mean, I mean, his chariots driven by four horses. And he was running onto Jesus. Because the Bible said, the whole cloud became dark. I mean, nobody wants rain to fall on him. You know what I'm talking about? In those days, they are not in the likes of vehicles that we use today. So he would definitely be running like hell so that the thing doesn't drop on him as a king. <laughs> Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? <laughs> and the Bible said Elijah had to run him. I mean, the Bible didn't say Elijah had to walk in. He had to run him. Because the hand got 26 miles. How can a old man run 26 miles and still have to run a chariot driven by four horses? When the power of God is at work, you will beat all your colleagues. When the power of God is upon your life, you will easily outrun all your comrades. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. Receive grace to overtake your equals. If your amen is louder than that, I see it happening immediately. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? 
The hand of God came upon him, he outran the king. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that God has spoken unto him from the beginning of the chapter did not prevent him from praying. And it's not just a prayer, Baba, thank you because you do it. He insisted until he saw Operation Push Prayer. Praying until something happens. He seems a lot of us will take the word of God for granted. <laughs> and we've forgotten the fact that we have the mandate to insist. And there is nobody that insists that does not see the glory of God. That's one thing I've seen. When people insist, the glory shows up. When people insist, the glory does what? Shows up. Glory be to God. This is what brings about changes in our Christian life. So today, ladies and gentlemen, God is speaking unto us. It is time to insist. Let me tell somebody, it is time to insist. Why is it that God wants us to be persistent at times before things happen? Because a lot of us will be wondering, why is it that God, just, Pastor just said, and two, three, four, ten people just got it? What about me? What about, I mean, 1,000 people got it? What about me? I, I mean, why can't it just happen like that for me too? Do you understand what I'm talking about? A lot of people don't understand. See, I've never been a beneficiary of a prophecy anywhere in time past, to the best of my knowledge, in terms of sitting down and then the man of God said, there's somebody here. And no, if the prophet, it didn't, like for me, it, it, it will never come, to, I mean, it never came to pass easy like that. Every prophecy I give here myself to, you know what? I noticed one thing, it, it wouldn't come to pass naturally like that for me. So what I do, I will get home, get out of my house <laughs> at night. By the time I charge worshiping him for like one hour, two hours, my whole hands will be burning with fire. Then I begin to repeat the prophecy that it comes to pass in my life. By the time the day breaks, I begin to see manifestations. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So that is how it happens. You just don't sit down and you are watching. If you sit down and watch, it doesn't naturally want to come to pass. And why? God allows it to a degree because it's a kingdom principle in itself. And God wants to rot some certain things inside of you. So you will allow that principle to come to play in your life. The mature has a way of taking things maturely. The Bible says strong meter for them. Oh my God, bro, this to Zikata. Who have learned to exercise their faith, their muscles, their capacity, their ability. In designing between things that are good or bad. You see, strong meat are for the matured. The ones who have grown up. The ones who have come to the place of maturity. Who have come to the place of responsibility. Who do not just want things to... You see, it is a baby that wants to be fed. A matured person would take the spoon and feed himself. We even go to the kitchen. Go to the market. Buy the stuff. Sir. Bring it to the kitchen. Prepare it. Set the table by himself. And he eats by himself. I'm not talking to somebody here. But a baby doesn't want to do anything than to cry. So that you can feed him. Is somebody here the one I'm talking about? So maturity is all about responsibility. God is not interested in just carrying babies. He wants you to be grown up. He wants you to be matured. Let me tell somebody, he wants you to be matured. So he wants persistence in your life. Is somebody hearing what God is talking about? It's a kingdom principle. Matthew chapter number 11 and verse number 12. Matthew 11 verse number 12, the Bible says, the kingdom of heaven, this is the days of John the Baptist suffered violence and men of violence take it by force. Please understand, Jesus said it. Jesus said it. He said, heaven and I will pass away, not a jot out of my word will go on for fear. So this is an eternal kingdom principle. No matter what your disposition is, it does not affect the authenticity and the reality of this principle. I mean, we can't do anything for the truth than, I mean, against the truth than for the truth. The best we can do is just to agree with it and align ourselves so that we can be beneficiaries of that which the truth carries. Am I talking to somebody here? Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence and men of violence take it by force. Why should I apply force? Why can't it just happen naturally for me? God said, since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And then you need to engage all applicable violent force in you to press through before you can have your home portion. He said in Obadiah 117, on Mount Zion there shall be holiness and deliverance. And the children of Israel shall possess their possession. So their possession, combining the two scriptures, their possessions 
cannot easily possessable except by the application of all relevant forces. He doesn't just want to come to them. You need to engage the forces to be able to see it come through for you. So to be a lazy Christian, ladies and gentlemen, is to be a destitute Christian. To be a lazy Christian is to lose out on every front. But I see God blessing us. Therefore, tell somebody, wake up and arise. <laughs> Rise up to responsibility and do that which is expected. Glory be to God. <laughs> God allows this because one, he wants to rot ruggedness in us. He wants to rot what? Ruggedness in us. In 2 Timothy chapter number 2 and verse number 3, the Bible says, as good soldiers endure hardness, as good soldiers of Christ. <laughs> endure what? Hardness. It didn't say endure hardship. They are two different things. God didn't say you should endure affliction and take afflictions off. No. Concerning afflictions, pray it off. Who is he that is afflicted? Let him pray. That is it. So he said, endure hardness, toughness. Be tough. And then you will see that rough times don't last. But tough people do. Amen. Glory be to God. When you are tough as a soldier, you will see situations changing easily. So God wants you to endure hardness. He wants you to be tough as a person. You are not just anybody that the devil can play with. I mean, the devil came to the house of T.L. Osborne. Some demons came there. And God opened the eyes of T.L. Osborne. And he was looking at those demons, two demons. And Satan came and met those demons there. And Satan started telling them, he said, I've told you, I've warned you never to come to the house of this man again. D can't you hear? I used to be. Because all of them are rebellious. He himself is rebellious. So the ones under him cannot but be rebellious. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, I've warned you not to come here again. I mean, God was showing T.L. Osborne what was going on in the realm of the spirit. I mean, you've come to a zone right now. You've come to a realm in your Christianity where your life and the, the entire hemisphere of your existence becomes a military zone for the devil. He cannot penetrate anymore in the mighty name of Jesus. Anytime the devil hears about you, he runs in the name of Jesus. Is somebody here know what I'm talking about? That is what we are saying. That man is tough. Is what? The devil knows that this man should open his, fire, his mouth like this. Fire descends on his kingdom. So you want those demons. You want to call fire on us again? Do you know what I'm talking about? I've told you not to come close to the house of this man again. That is the next thing I begin to see about you. All the witches on your street will relocate because you are there. You believe what I'm talking about? Let the amen be the loudest in the house. Anybody disturbing your destiny will never find rest at your presence again. Yeah. Is somebody hearing what God is talking about? Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about these things. <laughs> God wants to rot toughness inside of us. Number two, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Why is it that God is permitting persistence? Because it is the resistant breaker that we find in Christ. Persistence is a resistance breaker. <laughs> Let me tell somebody, it's a resistance breaker. That is to say, if your life is resisted on any side, be persistent. <laughs> if you are trying to do this business and for some reasons it's closing up, you're trying to make this application, for some reasons you are rejected. You looked at yourself and it's like you are hedged on every side. Ah, why is it that everything I want to do, I'm resisted? Ladies and gentlemen, engage persistence. It will break every resistance. Is the resistance breaker. No matter who is saying, you know, whether it is even God or even the devil, there's persistence as a power in itself to break all resistance. It will tear it up. If you insist on God, this is what I want, God will give you. Ah, <laughs> and persistence will clear the devil over at any time. In James chapter number four, verse seven, the Bible says, Resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. You resist the devil, he flees. Even if it's a billion demons coming against you, just say in the name of Jesus, they go. The name of Jesus is powerful. He clears them up both front and back. In Luke chapter number 10, verse 17, you know what the Bible says there? Luke 10, 17, he said, Behold, I give unto you power. I mean, from verse 19, right? He said, Behold, I give unto you power. 
He said, against all unclean spirit, against all abilities of the devil, he said, you will tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the abilities of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You will tread upon serpents and scorpions. You know what God is talking about? Serpent naturally has his own poison in front. Scorpion has his own at the back. So my name covers you both in front and at the back. That's what he's talking about. Wherever you are going, all the abilities against you, whether they are coming in front or they are coming by rest in front, uh, Pharaoh behind, he said, my name will deliver you. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Did he not say that I will go before thee? He said, that shall not go by sudden flight. He said, for the Lord thy God shall go before thee and he shall be your rear guard, front and back. That is the name of Jesus. Come on, put it together for Jesus. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? So when the devil comes, the Bible says, resist the devil and he shall what? Flee from you. That's what the Bible says. So if you had a bad dream, just don't wake up and take your, your phone to call pastor. I think anytime you call me, any other time from now, I'm going to ask you, what have you also done about it? Because if somebody slapping your dream, then you woke up and you are thinking of calling pastor. No, you go back and sleep. I'm going to slap the person. Can you, can you say that's the end of the sleep? No, you will say to yourself, this is part one. So go back to sleep. I'm going to slap the person. I have, when you not slap the person, you not wake up, you not coming. That's a balance equation. I like attending to balance equations. I might talk to somebody here. But that you are defeated and you are calling me from the defeatist perspective. No, I'm not part of it. Let me tell somebody, pastor, is not part of that. <laughs> is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? You, you are a victor in Christ Jesus. Oh, come on, hit yourself. Say, I know myself. <laughs> I'm a victor in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Glory be to God in the lives. <laughs> Is somebody hearing what we are talking about? So ladies and gentlemen, he said, resist the devil, James 4, 7, and he shall flee. But at times when you resist the first time, the thing doesn't want to go. More especially some stubborn thoughts. You know, the devil attacks mostly in the heart. Oh, you know that? The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God and pulling down the strongholds. We are the strongholds, casting down all imaginations and every hiding. that want to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. I'm bringing to captivity Every thought to the obedience of Christ. So imaginations and thoughts, they are the things the devil uses a lot. Do you understand me? So the mind of man is the wrestling ring. We are the battles of life are fought from. A battle you don't win in your mind, you can't win in the physical. Is somebody here what I'm talking about? So when the devil is coming, there are some thoughts. Ah, most especially some bad thoughts. Hmm. Masturbation could be one of those thoughts. You cast the thing, now the thing comes back again. Say, ah, God, after I, I just cast it out two minutes ago. <laughs> the thing bounces back. Boom. <laughs> Addiction is another one. Ah, if somebody is addicted to <laughs> marijuana, oh my goodness. Uh, you, 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 or cigarette, smoking. Ah, you pass where somebody is smoking. Like, some people are so anointed in darkness that mere smelling. The cigarette somebody is smoking about a mile away, they can tell you the name of the cigarette. No, that's a Morris. <laughs> Go and check it. You will discover it's a Morris. Which other one? <laughs> Benson and uh, Hedges. What do you call it? Broadmans. Eh? Rockmans. Rockmans. Thanks be unto God for redemption. <laughs> I may not know the names of those ones, but I know the names of all the streets in heaven. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. Some people are, you know, some people are like that. Mere passing, even if their car should pass through the area. I say, ah, that's Benson and Hitches. <laughs> they feel like taking the thing. I, I mean, they, they will be struggling with the thought. But please understand, ladies and gentlemen, if you resist and the thing is not going, say, but pastor, I bind the thought and the thought is not going, I show you what to do. Then you switch over to First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. The Bible says, uh, be sober and be vigilant for the devil, your adversary, who is going about like a roaring lion looking for whom to devour. Next verse, whom ye resist steadfastly. So if you resist the first time, it's not going, bind again. You engage steadfastness. By the time you do it two, three times, the devil will advise himself. You can be on it one day, you can be on it two days. Oh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I've fought with some thoughts for two, three days. At the end of the day, I got the victory. 
<laughs> I don't know who I'm speaking to here. Every fear that is bringing you down, that thought of fear, that thought of fear, I don't know what that kind of thought is, uh, that thought of fear that this is going to happen now and you are so afraid deep down within you. In the name of Jesus, I drop that thought off your life. Uh, I break the hold right now and the manacle of that thought in the name of Jesus. The anxiety is not yours. Let me tell somebody the anxiety is not yours. <laughs> now say concerning yourself, the anxiety is not mine. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. So ladies and gentlemen, we engage persistence at times to be able to win the battle. If you resist in the first time, it's not going, then you engage steadfastness. You resist steadfastly. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If you are not persistent, ladies and gentlemen, you may think you are bonding yesterday, but it's back. But by the time you are persistent, the devil knows, oh my goodness, this person is not going to take a no for an answer. He packs his load and run. Mm -hmm. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, there is a power in persistence. Let me tell somebody, there is a power in persistence. Many years ago, probably about maybe 15, 20 years ago, I was watching Kenny Higgin. And I remember this man of God just got up and he said, Oh, what a, what a power of, of, of consistency, of insistence, of persistence. He was just talking about the power of persistence. I just remember that part where he, he got up and he was very happy and was shouting that thing. What a power of persistence. And then of course, that time I didn't understand what he meant. I didn't even understand what the power of persistence was. You know what I'm talking about? I can't even remember where I was when he said that. I can't even remember what he preached. But ladies and gentlemen, I remember that man celebrating the power of persistence. For today, I've come to that place in Christianity where I can celebrate the same power too. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, it's an ability potent in Christ. The power of persistence. Let me tell somebody the power of persistence. Let me tell you this, ladies and gentlemen, some people have it easy in life. Because of the circumstances of their birth, or because of the endowments on their lives. Some people find it very easy. And you see, they, they just run through life so easily. Some people are well endowed. That in terms of intelligence, in terms of intellectual capacity, they don't struggle. Things just come for them easily. When I was in the university, for instance, I could read once. And I'm okay for the exam. I remember an exam that I read, you know, I went, I went to study. Oh, she's my classmate. She said, yeah, <laughs> she knew. <laughs> I, I, there was an exam I, 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 I was to do. About 2,000 students did the exam. Um, and then I went to pray in Chapel of Resurrection till 1 p.m. The exam was 4 p.m. And then I, I went to my room. I said, ah, I have an exam. For, between 1 and 4, I carried my book. I palmed all the Aristotles, the Socrates, the Plato's, the Bertrand Russell's, and all the... For every definition like this, I will give the lecturer a supply about six different definitions in the view of Aristotle. So, 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 so. Uh, in this way, uh, I, mean, I, I mean, according to this order of argument, Socrates said. And then, uh, 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 so, 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 to this hand, uh, Plato who pined. By the time I finish with six definitions... <laughs> I finished the whole thing, ladies and gentlemen. I saw the, the, the man, so whatever. They told me, Sir, you led our course. I said, What is it? He said, It's course 73. Ah, I said, Praise God. He said, That was all led the course. I had those two thousand students. And I heard about a girl who read the same course. He actually failed that course and came back to receive for it. And read it from the beginning of the semester to the end of the semester to score 40. So only God knows how many times this lady read this same course. But somebody read it in three hours and got 73. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, there are differences by reason of endowments. There are some that have five talents, some have two, some have one. But regardless of whichever one you have, if you have five talents, you plow it, you make 100%. That's fine. That means from your five, you became 10. I can plow my one and become 10 too. All I need to do is to do it better than you. And to insist and engage more time in doing my own. Mm -hmm. Am I talking to somebody here? I know a boy when we were in school. This boy was doing chemistry 157 and read his note before the exam 20 times. How many times? 20 times. We're laughing at him. One of my roommates said, if this is what it takes to pass, he said, they let you do I take away their success. <laughs> 
Because the boy would not sleep every night, studying again and again, again and again. You know what he said? He said, my uncle said, if I can have two one, he would get me a job in a bank. He had a two one, and the uncle got him the job in the bank. Now, he's enjoying his bank job today. He has his own car. He's doing so well. He has a family now. He has forgotten the days he went through the pains. But somebody here had a first class by reading ones. Maybe he invested in terms of energy, maybe 10,000 joules into studies. And maybe somebody has just invested 100 joules into studies. If the two of them had two one. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The days of pains are gone. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? And they are rejoicing today. Maybe probably, maybe that guy can, can be smarter in life, in other aspects of life than this other one. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? And the two of them may even be on the same level at work today. But the good news is this, you obtain the same result. See, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, you may not have the endowment somebody else has, but persistence can put you on the same level. Insistence can put you what? On the same level. We don't have the same circumstances about. Some people have some heavy parentage, wonderful parentage. They went to the likes of Grange. They went to the likes of Green Springs. And there are some of us that went to Fenibule High School. His brother was talking to me about the secondary school he went. He said the bouncing border that they used, the only test they did in the laboratory, he said it was this traditional lamp, the one they put oil, palm oil inside, that they used as bouncing border. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether all the ones you did were in solid laboratories and all that. And the one I did was a traditional lamp. The good thing about life, is that we are both success in life. Glory be to God in the highest. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? I imagine when Dr. Omi was looking for visa for, for her last delivery. You know, this woman went to the embassy the first time. <laughs> they bounced her with her husband. Her cousin said, no, the Lord said he will give you. Ah. They, they said, and she carried belle, and the belle, in fact, the word she used when she was talking to me about the belle, he said the belle was protruding by fire and by force. You know the meaning of that? So the baby was not ready to be hidden. As in, he said, you cannot cover my glory. No matter what she wore, the baby will announce to all the consulates that I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? So she went the second time. Having heard from the Lord, she was refused again. And then she called me. I said, no, go. Dr. Uh, Dejina said, go. You have to go. This one. I said, God showed me your visa. If he didn't tell me, then I will tell you to wait. I said, go again. They talk three times in three months. By the time they said, madam, ah, were you not the one who came last month? He said, and the month before you came again too. Ah, he said, what's your problem? <laughs> She told the consular, he said, forget it, you can't resist, you can't refuse me. You know, there's a point where you, you are so confident, you can't, you are too small to refuse me. He said, you can't, you, you, you just remove, you are, you are not afraid at that time. You go straight to, because, <laughs> you go straight to the point. He said, if what, that is what you are considering, you can't. <laughs> the consular has to pass out to, to his senior. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? And Bele was big then. She was about six, seven months pregnant. You understand? Know and they didn't want her to go because they didn't want her to go and deliver in America. <laughs> she, at the end of the day, they gave her the visa. She came out. Now, see, you, she had the bed. I looked, I see that baby today. I said, wow, this is a product. Your citizenship is a product of faith. That's how it is. That boy now will be carrying blue passport all over the world tomorrow. We'll be doing Shakara. And some certain ladies will see that blue passport. Ah, he's a good guy to go for. He's on two legs. <laughs> It's a tender. They didn't know it's a product of somebody else's faith. You will enjoy the benefits of some people's faith. Yeah. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Now, please understand, she had to be persistent. She has to be what? Persistent. Some people face some little opposition. They said they are not going. Hey, Pastor, I know they do. The fact that they refused me once, simply Miss God does not want me to go. Who told you? You just need to insist. God is just waiting for your insistence. God is just waiting for that little insistence from you and then you will see circumstances changing. You are giving up too early. Let me tell somebody, don't give up too early. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? If you can insist, you will see the glory of God. If it is the son of a president now, American embassy will bring the visa to the, or the daughter of a the president, they'll bring the visa to their house to come and give them. But if she's not the daughter of a president, she's the daughter of the king of kings and lord of lords, and the principle of the king of kings and the law of lords is insistence. So she insisted. 
and that he gave the way. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. The Lord said your car has been released, so he insist. I say your house has been released, so he insist. I say your job has been released, so he insist. I say your marriage has been released, so he insist. Say so I claim them now in the name of Jesus. Is somebody here know what I'm talking about? He's called the power of persistence. <laughs> He's a power in himself. Oh yeah, he's called the staying power. What do I call it? <laughs> when you demonstrate this power, ladies and gentlemen, every devil clears off. Every devil can stand your way. And the good thing about this uh, uh, staying power, any time we demonstrate it, let me say this very clear to each and every one of us. Every time we demonstrate this staying power, there is something it does. It clears every discouragement out. There are several reasons why a lot of people don't demonstrate it. And those things seem to have a hold on them. You want to clear it off? Try and demonstrate. You don't even need to bind those things. Just insist. You will see those things naturally dropping. In Proverbs chapter 24 verse 10, the Bible says if your strength fails in the days of trouble, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says your strength is little. Proverbs 24 verse 10. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? If your strength fails in the day of trouble, then your strength is little. Please understand, if you think, oh, I have so much faith, and then you are challenged, and everything is shaking in your life, please understand, you have little strength. It's a true measurement of yourself. But one thing is this, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter how little the strength is. In, just insist with that little strength. I do tell people, you know, the church of Christ has, has changed a lot of things for us. We are looking for big faith to be able to achieve big things. And that is not what is responsible for the achievement of big things. What is responsible is little faith that can be persistent. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Great faith is actually little faith that is persistent. Oh, you don't understand? Let me explain this to you. In, 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 in Matthew chapter, uh, is it chapter 20 now? Jesus was teaching. Jesus said, if you have faith like a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, be ye therefore removed. Now, mustard seed, I have it in my house. It's so small. So insignificant. You can blow it away with the breath of your nose. It's so small. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Now, if you have faith like a mustard seed, as small as that. In fact, the Bible says it's the smallest of all seeds. If your faith can be as small as that. He said, you can say to this mountain, be it therefore removed, and it shall live. Now, the church of Christ has taught us that we need to have faith as big as a mountain to be able to say to a mustard seed size problem, go. But Jesus said, you need to have faith like a mustard seed, as small as a mustard seed, to say to this mountain. Let's go back to the Bible to get the Bible result. Am I talking to somebody here? You don't need an additional faith as it were. You only need to add persistence to the faith. You only need to, you see, please understand, if you are making cake, those who are in cake business, they know. When your cake is summer, when your mixture is not correct, you don't need additional flour. Maybe some other additives come. You know, now they even have sapele water to cake. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? They had, you, you, you just need some more additives and then, you will see the thing coming up. After you have finished making your soup and the soup is not tasting nice, do you need some more pepper? No. Oh, <laughs> give it to some good caterers. They will have some more maggies. Some more heroes. <laughs> I'm not talking to somebody here. Before you know what is happening, niceness will show up. <laughs> you just, this is all that you need to have to your faith, persistence. In Matthew chapter number 15, starting from verse 22, the Bible talks about the case of the Syrophoenician woman. Who came on Jesus and told Jesus, you know what? <clears throat> my son, my daughter rather, is grievously vexed by a demon. And Jesus did not answer. The Bible said the woman insisted and kept going after Jesus. Jesus did not answer. The Bible said the disciples came on to Jesus and sent this woman back. Now, that is intercession. She firstly came making petition. Jesus didn't answer. Now, the, the disciples came speaking to Jesus on behalf of this woman. That's intercession. Jesus didn't answer. The Bible said the woman came and knelt down. That's worship. And worshipped them. And begged. That's worship again. <laughs> Thanksgiving and praise. Jesus didn't answer. And the woman, the Bible said, and the woman said, have mercy on me. That's supplications. That's a prayer for, so, for, for mercy. The, Jesus did not answer. I mean, 
how can you engage different kinds of prayers and Jesus is just saying no and it's the same yesterday, today and forever. I don't know whether there's somebody here you are saying, I've tried Thanksgiving, Pastor. I danced last Sunday. I didn't see anything. I praise God like hell. I Even in my home, I've not seen. He said, Pastor, I have prayed and prayed and prayed. I even prostrated and asked God for mercy. If it is the sin of my grandmother's self, just forgive me. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? And it's like, I'm not seeing anything. And somebody is still saying, Pastor, you know what? Have even tried petition. Even other people are even praying for me. Say, my mother's taught they are praying. My father's taught they are praying. All my friends, they are praying. Everybody is, ah. It's like everybody is trying this and trying that for me, you know, praying to God, and there's still no result. At the end of the day, Jesus turned to the woman. He said, I cannot give the children's bread to dogs. How can you insult somebody by calling the person a dog? And the woman said, there's no problem, Oga. By calling me a dog, I don't even mind. But please know that dogs can eat crumbs. <laughs> that drop from the table. He said, so something can still reach out to dogs. <laughs> ah, Jesus said, oh, woman, great is your faith. <laughs> you are not going to give. He said, there, there's an exclamation mark there. Go and read the scripture. He said, oh, woman, great is your faith. What is the greatness of faith there for? Persistence. No matter how little the faith is, if you have persistence, it becomes great. It becomes great. I think some people here just need to persist. So many prophecies have been given. Have you been persistent on it? I remember Pastor Miwa's wife. We, uh, some people were to collect tight one day. And I was to pray. I said, the Lord said, you people paying tight today, that this week you are going to see favor. Mrs. Iyamo paid. Pastor Miwa's wife paid. And the next Sunday, Pastor Mi was why uh, Mr. Yamu came. He said, immediately Pastor gave that word. He said, by Monday, this happened. That happened. The great favor. She was so happy. Then Pastor Mi was wife said, ah, uh, I also paid that. Only the two of us paid. Said, what is going on? Ah, uh, for crying out loud, I paid. What about my own? She now began to fight. He said, he said I went to battle with God. My home was drawn. That same week, she opened her mail. She saw, she said, uh, we have this contract for you from Lagos State. We have this, we have that. About two, three different jobs came in for her. If she did not fight, it could have gone like that. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. You just need to insist. And God expects you to do that because you are matured. Glory be to God. Can we put it together for Jesus? <laughs> Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Insistence and persistence, therefore, <laughs> they represent cardinal forces in this Christian work. The Lord said, there's somebody here, your leg area is being healed right now. Amen. I command in Jesus' name that our leg be healed completely. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are whole in Jesus' name. Is somebody hearing what we're talking about? They are cardinal what? Forces in the kingdom. And I want to know something, ladies and gentlemen, when you are insistent, please insist on the right course. Write it down. A lot of people are insistent on negative courses. They are insistent on the wrong thing. And that's the reason why their insistence is counted as something else. When you are well resolved and you are resolute, please understand, on the right course, huh, oh, Magabo Shakata, you see everything working. You see everything coming out for you. I'm telling you, you will see all angels walking with you. When you are stubborn on the right course, they call it persistence. But when you are persistent on the wrong course, they call it stubbornness. That's how it is. So you need to locate the right course before you are insistent. The fact that the scripture says it, that is good, but also find out what the spirit is saying. The will of God is what makes your persistence foolish or wise. The presence or the absence of the will is what makes it foolish or wise. Please understand, locating the will of God before you are insistent is, is very important. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter number 5, starting from verse 15, he said, <clears throat> Walk it therefore circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Ephesians 5.15 Walk ye therefore circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. The next verse. He said, redeeming the time, for the days are evil. The next verse. The Bible says, uh, he, said, he said, be ye not unwise, but knowing what the will of God is. So what is the difference between foolishness and wisdom? The knowledge of what the will of God is. 
be not unwise, but knowing what the will of God is. He said, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So how do I know whether I'm on the foolish ground or on, or on the ground of wisdom? The Bible says, don't be unwise, but knowing what the will of God is. So you can't know what the will of God is and be unwise. So the will of God is what positions you in wisdom. What is God saying? Now, you, you, the fact that you are insisting that this lady, I must marry you by fire, by fire. What if it's not God's will? You see, some people say, I waited for her for four years. She slammed me a big no. Uh, it's because <coughs> if you are sure God spoke to you, brother, you can stay for 10 years. She will still come back. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, have you not seen cases like that? One of my sisters said a no to a brother. Oh, my goodness. There's nothing my sister didn't do for this brother. <laughs> I, 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 you know, when you treat a brother to the point where you can even get pepper water and pour on him, and the guy still has staying power. <laughs> the guy still exercises all the forgiveness in the world. And the guy will still come back. <laughs> the guy stayed for years. At the end of the day, my sister gave him. <laughs> Please understand, but you have to know it is God's will. Oh, she's the one God spoke to me. Then you can stay and you can insist if God says you should stay. There are times God also will tell you to move. <laughs> because some people might have made up their minds. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? The Bible says if you go to a place to preach the gospel and they don't welcome you, what do you do? He said, Ja, just leave. Ja, <coughs> do what? <laughs> so you need to know the will of God. On the issue before you can insist. Because that is what declares your action to be wise or foolish. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? But if I know the will of God and God is telling me, hold on. Brother, you can hold on. That company will soon employ you. You can hold on. Your promotion will soon come through. I say you can hold on. That car will come. You can hold on. That house will come. You can hold on. Your joy will be full. I might talk to somebody here. Come on, tell somebody I will persist. And I will break through. On every side. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? That is what we see as the power of persistence in Christ Jesus. It's a special ability that God has given unto us. To hold on and get the right answer through in our lives. It's a special ability. Some people are holding on to wrong cause, wrong things. They are fighting wrong causes. And that's the reason why everything is against them. And they will still be, look at Balaam. God said, don't go and curse the children of Israel. He said, no, let me just go. Okay. Let, the angel still appeared. The, the horse was driving him into the bush, of bruising his leg against the wall. At the end of the day, the horse stayed. The, the, the angel said, if not for this horse, I would have smitten you this, this, this three times. That means he could have been dead. The angel would not lie. This is what I'm talking about. And the man still told the angel, said, shall still let me go. Until it met death, he still went. He died. He, lost, uh, he was a genuine prophet, prophesying about Christ. He died with all his prophetic mantle. He's in hell as I speak. Jesus made mention of him in Revelations. He said, Balaam, for the wages of unrighteousness, because of the money value he wanted to get, he still went. There are some people, maybe for wrong reasons, I don't know, whether for monetary you know, reasons or whatever, they, you, they, they, are, they are insisting on a cause that is breaking their lives, that everything is breaking down, they are still going. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's stubbornness. It's not persistence. There's a difference between the two. Locating God's will and staying on God's will is what makes it persistence. Glory be to God. Is somebody hearing what God is talking about? So ladies and gentlemen, what are we saying today? Persistence is a special ability God has given unto us that he wants us to exercise. And I must let you know, ladies and gentlemen, when we exercise and demonstrate this staying power, <laughs> it changes a lot of things about our lives. <laughs> oh, it changes a lot of things about our lives. <laughs> it is one way to collect the best of God and to collect the best that is meant for you. There are so many people, as I speak right now, I, I have that witness inside of my spirit. I have that witness inside. I can see it in my spirit. There are so many people that there are so many blessings resting on their lives. <laughs> ah, Len Grady, I was talking to one of my daughters. She's here today. I said, I can see a highland like this, and I can see on another island. I said, on this island, there are so many, so much of your blessings. You are busy praying that God should give. I said, they are there. I said, now, how to move them from here to here? Let me teach you. And I told her, instantly, before you know what is happening, all the things she's been waiting for for so many years, 10, 20 years, they started dropping. Boo, ba, boo, ba, boo, ba. Do you know what I'm talking about? There are so many people that, you see, you just need to engage this. Because those blessings have been released from heaven. They will find their way to your doorstep. It's the power of persistence. 
Oh, glory be to God. It's an ability in Christ Jesus. Let me tell somebody, it's an ability in Christ Jesus. When we engage this ability, ladies and gentlemen, what belongs to us comes. In 1 Kings chapter number 19, we saw a scenario here with a man by the name Elijah. The Bible said, of course, we all know the story how Elijah killed all the false prophets and all that. Now, the Bible said from uh, verse number one, when Ahab got home, he asked all that happened with Jezebel, and Jezebel was so hungry. Jezebel is a kind of spirit in the church today, threatening the will of God. But we thank God that we insist on the will. Glory be to God. Now, the Bible said that verse number two, Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah and said, May the king, may the gods do this unto me, and be ye more severely. If by this time tomorrow I don't make your life as one of those prophets that you killed. Ah, verse 3, the Bible says, when the man of God saw. Huh? Let me tell somebody, when the man of God saw. <laughs> Jezebel sent words. It was a text message. She fired an SMS to Elijah. But when the man of God saw. Now, words, please understand. He sent words, but the man of God saw it. He didn't hear it. He saw it. You know the meaning of that? You know, that word painted pictures. <laughs> he, he saw how he caught the head of one prophet like, and the head bounced. Bo, bo. When the man of God saw that picture, he said, I will make your life like that. <laughs> the Bible said the man of God advised himself <laughs> and dialogue with his legs. <laughs> Glory be to God. <laughs> and ran for his very dear life. <laughs> and verse number three, he got to Beersheba that belongs to Jordan or belongs to one city. The Bible said, and there he left his servant. This servant has been serving Elijah for so long. Oh, all through the years of famine. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in church, this servant was there. All through the years of famine. Ladies and gentlemen, in the widow's house, this servant was there. Now, the Lord has brought Elijah to a new realm. And this servant, I mean, Elijah was about to enter into a dimension. You know what this servant said? He said, oh God. When the God said, please stay here, okay? For the Lord has sent me. Onto another place. The servant said, Thank you, sir. He didn't argue, Kokontia, Shemini, he refused to Shemiji. Ojo, Kony, straight. Only God, thank you. I've been following this prophet, Kola dress. He's a criminal everywhere. Everybody wants to arrest him. Thank God I have my liberty. <laughs> yes, I'm this is not the kind of man to follow. He doesn't have a church, he doesn't have anything. He doesn't have any follower. He's, he's the most despised of all men in this land. Every, I mean, the other I'm talking about, he's a coup. <laughs> the man just sat down and said, Thank God. I, I don't collect my... He himself is the one who said I should go. So there's a divine release. He said it by himself. So I took it from his mouth. The Bible says Elijah left. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So the man waited. The next verse, the Bible said Elijah got under the juniper tree and he said, Father, it's better for him to die because his life was not better than that of his father. From that day, his ministry started closing up. The next thing God said unto him was, okay, Elijah, rise and hit, oh yeah, go to the mountain top. For, oh, you have an encounter with God. The angel appeared to him and told him. And there he had an encounter with God. What was it that God told him on the mountain? Go and anoint Elisha in your stead. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He opted to die because his life wasn't better. And God said, okay, go and, go and walk on the replacement street. The replacement plan started from there. The succession plan. God bless you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Started from there immediately. Now, God would have not bypassed you who have labored to go and annoy somebody here outside. Go and check all through scriptures. Jesus gave the mantle to his disciples. Elisha gave the mantle to Elijah. I mean, Elijah gave the mantle to Elisha. Elisha followed Elijah for another 12 years old. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You will see men releasing mantles over people that follow them. You will see Moses releasing mantle over Joshua. Joshua was Moses' servant. But this man, at the time when he was about to collect a breakthrough, the man left him. He said, okay, do you know the same thing Elijah did for Elisha? In 2 Kings chapter number 2, the Bible said when it was time from verse 1, for God to take Elijah home. Elijah was going from Gilgal, and he said, verse number 2, unto Elisha. He said, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Bethel. Elisha said unto him, as the Lord liveth and as your soul liveth, I will never <laughs> leave you. Oh, verse number 4, he got unto Bethel. And he said, please, stay here, for the Lord has sent me unto Jericho. He said, no, as the Lord liveth, and as your soul liveth, I will not stay. Ah. He got, and you know the sons of the prophet, like in verse 3, they met Elisha. They said, you know, God is taking your master away from you today. They were mocking him. They were saying, no problem. <laughs> he broke through all resistance. He got to Jericho, verse 6. The man said, please stay here. 
2 Kings 2. For the Lord has sent me unto Jordan. He said, as the Lord liveth, and as your soul liveth. That means he broke through until he got into his answer. The answer, the mantle on Elijah did not come easily. He had resistance too. There is nothing that God wants to give you that the devil doesn't want to resist. But we have the same power to break through. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? The first servant lost it and lost out on it completely. Because he didn't understand this thing, this mystery that we are sharing today. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? But if you understand it, ladies and gentlemen, you can stay through and get all that God has in mind for you. I see everything that heaven has released over your life dropping into your lives. As I'm speaking prophetically, begin to receive your blessings. As I'm speaking prophetically, begin to receive your blessings. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I see all that heaven has released dropping on your lives. Pray, 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 pray in the Holy Ghost. Yengre dibo zunaman teribo jagata. I see all that heaven has released dropping on your life. Oh, Father, we give you all the praise. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. I think somebody has received something. There is grace in staying through. Rise to your feet. Let's bless the Lord. Oh, Father, we give you all the praise. Lengre dibo shanaman, dibo zantra hag de zenamontes. Wherever you are, come and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. There is somebody here, just one more step. You are ready into your blessings. I just want you to pray in the Holy Ghost right now and launch yourself into it. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up in the name of Jesus. Come on, pray, 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 pray in the Holy Ghost. Prodigaste Zangatari, Yembro Lagadoxta Zombreninge Lagadoxto Zombrenia. I'm gonna engage all the relevant forces. Yangra Kabarate, Yembro Ligadoxte, Zambro Lingerishto Zambra Hagde, Mandale Hagdo Zonamonte, Yegebo Zataya, Lengre Dibo Zonamante, Zegre Dixo Zara Hagde. I'm gonna engage all the relevant forces and break through into my answers. Lemonacato Zombreningerishto Zabro Hagda Haya. Oh, Yambro Ningeri Doctor Zumbre Hangadaste, Lambro Ningeristo Zumbra Hangarada Zubre Hegda, Lombre Ningeri Doctor Zubre Hagde Zeremonta, Lombra Ningeri Doctor Zumbre Ningeristo, Roma Matagda Zadbra Hagde Zegeresto, Yengre Digeboxa, Yabro Cabarate, Yembro Dagadoxa, Yandre Degeboxe, Yembro Lagadoxte, Zenre Ningerista, Mandale Docto Zumbre Ningeristo, Lagra Dagde Zeremonta, Yambra Gadabaze, Lobra Lido Dexo Gebo Prali Hagdes and Amonta, Longfre Ningeri Doctor Zombre Ningerista, Longre Dicto Zunamante, Yakebo Fradigadista. Lord, we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Yambra Lagadaxto Zombrenia. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. There is somebody in this ministry that came to see me after the last night vigil. And then was with me on Wednesday and was sharing the testimony of what happened. The last night VG, the person just came and then gave me an envelope. When I collected the envelope, I knew this woman needed money. I said, and you are sewing? Uh, lo and behold, I opened the envelope. I found about um, $400 inside. Anyway, the Lord said, I should also give out the, the money. So I gave the money out. Now here this, ladies and gentlemen, but when she gave me the money, I laid hands on her and prayed for her. The woman said, as I stepped out of your office, all heavens were opened. He said, money just started dropping. Even I want to write one breast, they don't money. Before you know what is happening, I'm, I'm talking about heavy bills. They were carried by mercy. Now the woman was telling me on Wednesday, and she told me something. He said, but before, until God opened her eyes to see what she should do. Many people is, I mean, Ah, lihu jagatayam brunia. Knowing the will of God and doing it is what projects it into your answers. That's what makes you wise in life. You are going to pray, Father, open my eyes to your will. Part time in my life, somebody begin to pray right now. Lengebo jena mangra kabo zupre digadosta. Begin to pray right now, Father, open my eyes to the depth of your will. What am I to do? What am I to take my steps on? How am I to go about it in life? That is wisdom. Mambrania, somebody begin to 
pray. Father, open my eyes. What relevant force am I supposed to persist on? What am I supposed to do? What is the step I'm supposed to take? Lord, open my eyes today in the name of Jesus into the specificity of your will. Mambra nengerenokto zumbre nengarakste mengalabag zonamante yegebo zabrahaya. Lord, open my eyes into strange results. Open my eyes from today, oh God, into strange orders. Luberakata. Somebody here has a stomach problem. I said, the power of God taking it away right now. As I speak, Yambra Nengere Dokto. The Lord said, there's somebody's application to this week that is receiving a favorable answer. Lengerebo Shakata. Pray, 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 pray. Open my eyes to which step I'm supposed to take, to whom I'm supposed to speak to. Lord, Yambrania, to whom I'm supposed to associate with. Lord, open my eyes, Yambrania. How am I supposed to go about it? Yambro Nagadaxe, Zendre Hexo Prahadi, Rumi Mate Zegebronia. Lord, open my eyes into the depth of the spirit, into the depth of the spirit. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed. And my eyes were open in a vision right now. And I see someone, somebody is fighting with you. You, you are fighting to, it's like the person is contending with you on your blessings. You are going to pray, whatever is contending with me on my home right, on my, on my blessings, on that which heaven has given unto me. I destroy all antagonists over my life. Somebody begin to pray right now. In the name of Jesus, every force fighting with me. I said today, you are permanently a by the power of the Spirit, I scatter. And get the forces of heaven right now in the name of Jesus. Ending every contending force, I root you out in the power of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, every contending force, I say you are a better from today in my life. In the name of Jesus, out, 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 go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed? Amen. You are going to pray one prayer. In the Lebo Ah, Holy Spirit of God, send to me strange helpers. Send to me what? Wherever they are all over the world, people who are hand lifters, people who can turn around the dynamics of things in your hand by putting in their hand into what they are doing, what you are doing. Yeah, Jacob came and put his hand into what Laban was doing. The Bible said, little became multitude. Oh, yeah, brakato, barakata, yeah. Joseph put his hand into what Potiphar was doing. The Bible said, everything prospered. You are going to pray, Father, send to me, help us. Great destiny, help us. Oh, barakata, sombre, nigadaya. The Lord said, there is one of my sons here. Your construction business has been released. He said, you will see speed coming on your construction business. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray right now. Yembro Nagaboksa. Yembra. Bagaba. 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 Pray, 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 pray. In the power of the Spirit. Send to me strange apples. Lome Matek Zeketaya. Send to me strange apples. Yombre nigeradoto zombre ningerista. Lombre nigadaxte zembro nagadaya. Lombre nigadoxte zombre ningerista. Lombre nigadoxte zezeze. Lumi matexa ya brohado. Ruba gaba brali doxte zubra hage. Lost strange alpas, strange alpas. Send them to me right now in the name of Jesus. Ye grekerebo zobra hagda haya. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. <clears throat> now hear this. We are talking about multiplication. We are talking about from leanness to fatness. Somebody moved on Thursday from leanness to fatness in this church. Not even somebody. Uh, about three to four people. And I looked at how they moved. Ladies and gentlemen, they cannot believe it. It was like a movement from zero. Okay, maybe from like 
36,000 naira. And they moved to over 40 something million. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen. And I was like, God, God, God. <laughs> I was discussing with a pastor and I was telling them how this thing was going to be for them. And it came to pass exactly like that. You cannot be in the same assembly. You can't be by the river bank and be thirsty. It is a practical impossibility. You are here, the same word is for you. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, What has spoken unto one has spoken to all. That's what God says. So why should some people be the beneficiaries while you are an onlooker? No, I refuse to be a spectator. Begin to pray from leanness to fatness. Father, I migrate supernaturally. Somebody begin to pray. In the power of the Spirit, I move. Lord, I move from leanness to fatness. I move from leanness to fatness by the power of the Spirit. Lombre negados te zubra kadarate zakata. Lombre negados te zubra ningerista. I move from leanness to fatness by the power of the Spirit. Roma Kataya, I relocate in the name of Jesus. By the power of God, I leave the highland of poverty. I leave the highland of stagnation. Things are not stagnant for me. Everything is moving in my life. Everything is prosperous in my life. In the power of the Holy Ghost, I move to my next level. In the name of Jesus, I married this year. <laughs> hey, Yekebo Shakata. Come on, claim it, claim it. I married this year, this year, this year. 2017, I married. 2017, Yekebo <laughs> Shakata. Ah, there is no carryover in my life. I receive all my blessings. I insist and persist. I insist and persist. I am tenacious on my right. In the name of Jesus, that that which belongs to me, come unto me. Ah, yeah, yeah, powers of darkness, I resist you steadfastly. Get off my blessings. In the name name of Jesus. Yes, I migrate. <laughs> Woo! I migrate in the power of the Holy Ghost. I migrate. I migrate. I migrate. I migrate. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You are expecting death. The Lord said concerning that family member, he said, I turn around the situation. Yes. See the spirit of the living God. Father, we just want to give you all the praise. For what you have done today, blessed is your holy name. Every antagonist and everybody engaging you in a wrestling fight over your blessings. From today, they are judged out of your lives. I cause them and I break all their powers off in the mighty name of Jesus. I disable and disarm all your enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, begin to speed up in prosperity in the name of Jesus. You will not give up in life. You will not give up before your answers. From today, stretch your two hands forward. Lembro, mambre, membro, mambre. You know what? I saw, I saw some, some, I mean, I saw some angels. They're just putting hands on people's hands. Look at your neighbors. Just put your hands on the hands of your neighbor and let the neighbors also put hands on your hands. In the name of Jesus, receive your blessings. Receive your blessings. Prophesy, prophesy on your neighbors. Receive your blessings. Receive your blessings. Your two hands on our hands. Our two hands on your hands. In the name of Jesus. Your two hands on his hands. His two hands on your hands. Receive your blessings. By the power of God. Oh yes, bring your hands. Receive your blessings. Bring your hands. Receive your blessings. Receive your blessings. Oh yeah. I receive my blessings in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost from today that which has proven elusive this week you will come back with testimonies go in the power of the Holy Ghost and celebrate Jesus for answers it is done ladies and gentlemen can we celebrate him the Bible says we should not forget to thank him for answers can we thank him for answers we we'll thank you Jesus for the staying power in Jesus mighty name We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080 33 706 938 and 080 28 28 1839. Or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.com. 
www.thepeopleshow.org and connect with us on our social media platforms, facebook.com forward slash DGCCINTL, Instagram at DGCCINTL. On YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church. Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL. Stay blessed.